Hey guys, it's Stephen here. Welcome back to another video and another special episode of the City Social. Got Nadim Manua alongside me. Nadim, my friend, how you doing, man? You good? Yeah, I'm tip top, mate. How are you, Steve? I'm good. It's a busy week, uh, as you were saying seconds ago. Uh, well, uh, you know, a few things have happened this week in the world of Manchester City. Um, see your <laughs> Premier League champions again. Uh, you're a big blue as well, man. That's, that's quite, quite nice, isn't it? Uh, watching Man City win another Premier League. Yeah. Yes, it is, yeah. And to be honest, for me personally, that was probably the first one I could fully enjoy, being like back ah. as a fan again. Because beforehand, like being in the academy and stuff, I probably enjoyed it around those sort of times. But then when I was more so full-time not playing for the first team, there wasn't really that much success to talk about. Let's, let's be very, very clear about that. <laughs> and then even when we go back to 2012, everyone said, oh, that was such a great moment, this, that, and the other. But I was, I was one of about eight people who didn't fully enjoy it for what it was because... Because we thought we, we lost the well, QPR. it's quite funny, yeah. actually. Nine years ago today, and actually it was about 10 minutes after the exact minute when Aguero scored that we started recording this video. So, like, um, <laughs> basically, that was the... Yeah, we talked about it. Me and Adam talked about that like, great length on, the, on the, um, the big old chat we did on this channel a while back. And I put a link on the screen right now, and that's fantastic. Because Nadim, we forget, was playing as a Man City fan for QPR uh, yes. during that day, thinking QPR could have been relegated and all that kind of stuff. But that's a story for another day. That was absolutely wild. But this one, <laughs> this one, I've heard, I actually, I was chatting to David Mooney the other day uh, and I, I heard you were playing five-a-side football the other night with him and Sam Lee as City were about to win the league. I mean, what are that's you play, doing playing five-a-side football against amateurs, man? That's not even fair. Well, yeah. so you say <laughs> this, but if you think about it, I am an amateur now as well, see? So one shouldn't get ahead of oneself, should they? That's the thing. And it was, <laughs> It was a bit. It was a bit good fun. To be fair, Mooney's pretty good. I've got a few question marks about around Sam Lee. I think he's got a better understanding of the game than say performance. But you know, it is what it is. Eh? It's what it is. I am. I'm just glad I wasn't there. I'm just genuinely glad I wasn't there because not that I would have been. But either way, <laughs> it would have been embarrassing. Um, nah, Mooney's actually good a pretty fun. good keeper. Is he a good? Yeah, keeper, Mooney. Really? Yeah, he may, yeah, he's good. He impressed me. He impressed me a lot. He's got good composure. He's uh, he's like really good shot stopper. I was pleasantly surprised. I was expecting more from Sam, as I say, but you know, nobody's perfect. And the, well, uh, and know, the, illusion, the illusion's gone now. Let's just say that. Talks the talk. Well, I'm going to pretend. I'm going to pretend I've got a hidden talent that no one knows about, and no one will ever find out that. Uh, so Sam <laughs> Moody was saying actually, like he felt a little bit awkward, like telling you to watch him, man, because he's like, I'm telling a man, X Man City player no. or whatever, but not awkward, but like, am I actually no, doing that's this? The job. That's the job. That's the job. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter who you are. If it's the right call, it's the right call. Doesn't matter who you speak to. Be honest. To. Be honest as well. Were you holding back? Were you holding back? Be honest. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. Like the game itself <laughs> didn't call for me to work or play that hard. So I was doing what I was doing and I was contributing. But the way I was thinking about it was that if they said we needed to score eight goals to like save the world, I would have scored eight <laughs> goals or whatever. But ultimately, <laughs> the standard is a standard, and people just there to enjoy it. And I'm not going to go go out there and try and ruin it. But it's that whole ceiling concept and my ceiling is a lot higher than say what was going on on that particular day so you know the harder it is the more I'll play but until then I, just enjoy myself I don't think I'll ever um, experience a moment when I walk into a room or event and know that I'm definitely better than everyone else there you fuck, <laughs> you fuck <laughs> <laughs> like, I would never ever experience that in my life I, don't, I can't even say it in my own flat sometimes when Nicola around it's just like I'll try but it probably won't even be true it's, but either way man bad. um it's not a bad way to be playing football. And I heard as well, you have to, you have to shoot off, didn't you, 20 minutes early because you were on Sky minutes mm. later chatting about the game. And, um, but I guess more important things uh, you know, happen. City win the league is huge. I mean, mm. I want to talk about that a little bit because, as you said, it's the first one you've got to enjoy for a long time uh, as a City fan. And, um, and it was a weird one to enjoy, I guess, because, you know, we're all sat at home. You know, um, everything's changed. Hopefully, it's only temporary. We're, we're going to see, hopefully, fans back in the stadium very, very soon. Um, but what do you think this one meant for Manchester City? Yeah, particularly Pep Guardiola, because it's been, um, I, I would say, an interesting year for Guardiola. It's been a tough year as well, personally, at one point, you know, of, um, he had a, he obviously, you know, he lost a very important family member due to all this. And there was times where, um, particularly uh, during 2020, and understandably so, I'm, I'm not saying it's way to any sense, time where he looked, it looked like life, he was struggling, you know, like it looked like it was yeah. tough for life. And I don't know if it was because of that, but either way, he didn't look happy at times. So I guess what I'm getting at is, what do you think this particular title will mean for Manchester City and for Guardiola as well as an individual? I think um, we, can, we can break it down essentially or we can look at like bigger sort of things. And for the way that the last season finished where Liverpool was so far ahead of everybody, given the fact that the year before City were right there neck and neck with them, initially you're going into the off-season, I imagine, and you're feeling a sense of pressure because you have to bounce back. So for the yeah. next season to start, obviously we're still, in, we're still in the pandemic. 
but for the next season to start and to not really hit the ground running, that's like alarm bells. This is a different situation. We've not seen this from a Pep side for a very, very long time. So the games are progressing and come October time, most people write City off. And in fairness, you, I can understand why people would think that because this is a City situation which they've not seen for years where City are struggling in the sort of like, you know, sitting around mid-table essentially hoping to be able to climb the league and not essentially playing that well to the point where you expect them to start winning games. So the pressure yeah. was on massively. But to look back from this point now and to see that they won the league without being front runners when everybody wrote them off, it adds a certain, another like, a, another like star to their chest or something because they showed yeah. that they can't win the league without being at the very top and everything going their way because, they, as I say, they weren't there. I think it, turn, it was turn of the year, United were top of the league, Liverpool were second, City were wherever they were. But then the run that they went on, I think we'll probably appreciate a lot more when the season's done and when we look back in years gone by because they literally won every game for about three months. Like, that's not, that's not normal at any level of football, whether it's Premier League or Sunday League under whatever. It's like, that's not normal. So, sorry. So, for them to be able to do that, it's, like, it's, it's astonishing. And obviously, it's been very, very difficult, firstly, because of the pandemic. Secondly, because the, the effects of the pandemic in terms of football and life itself, because for those players and stuff, all they've had this year is, is playing football. They've not yep. really been able to have that sort of social element of stuff like in times gone by where you're playing Saturday, Saturday, and you've got a lot of time to develop and prepare and enjoy each other's company to go out and do this, go out and do that. You know, everybody yeah. in the world's lost that social element. So for them to be able to come together and to like have that common goal and to achieve it when the odds were very much against them and in the way that they did it by essentially being perfect, they were a perfect team for a few months. Yeah. Like you have to look at it and say, well, yeah, it was very, very impressive. Like this, this one, even though it's been without fans, I think it's going to have a sort of asterisk next to it, but not in a negative way because it was a reminder of how hard it was because for every team that's played football this year, obviously, you know, people have struggled, people have lost their lives and so on in the pandemic, which always has to be mentioned. But that's a tough season for them because all they've done is play every three days in front of nobody and being lucky enough, I think as you did as well, to, go, to be able to go and watch a game in a stadium with no fans. It's a game, yeah. but it's not a game. And the no, players out there... It, it's, it's quite a lonely it's experience, it, isn't it, in a way? Like, it feels yeah. different, man. It feels different. That's what I felt from it anyway. 100%, because that's, that's like... Usually we're in situations like that as players for like training games and stuff like that, and you know it matters. But there's always something in the back of your mind where, yeah, you say, yeah, but it's still a training game. But imagine going out there now. This is a must-win game. You come out, and the only like buzz or whatever you can gain is from the people around you. You don't have a crowd to either try and silence or a crowd to try and make get really excited. Even for the uh, League Cup final, I was lucky enough to go to that game. And the bit which I forgot about because it's been so long was that moment when the players come out onto the field to do a warm-up and yeah, you've got man. fans in the crowd and there's the clap and there's that excitement and energy. You know, like I'm getting actual, goosebumps. Actual thinking goosebumps, about that. Yeah, literally, literally you got goosebumps too. It's just, it's a buzz, isn't it? It's what you want. It's what you want. Exactly. And that's not even for the game. That's just for the warm-up. You know what I mean? So imagine what it's like when, say for City, it's a game which they have to win. And they go out and all the fans are there. They know they have to win. So they're like singing from the get-go. They're at the stadium waiting for the players to arrive. They arrive, you know, all that type of stuff which we've seen before. Imagine not having that. And whether your goal is to win the Premier League or to stay in the Premier League, you miss out on a significant bit of that. So to be able to achieve something in this time, I think that, you know, you have to give massive credit to City because, as I say, they were, things were very much against them probably five, six months ago. But now they won the league with three games to go. I mean, does that bring this? Surely that brings the squad closer together as well. Because when you've been through that together, and they always say that in general, relationships are built on shared experiences and all that kind of stuff. And I guess in some ways, like it's a, a slight shared trauma. You know that what they've gone through. It's been yeah. a really tumultuous time for pretty much everyone, and it's been a weird time. And um, I, I can't imagine how they won't feel together. And my dad's a steward at Man City as well, and he he's the amount of times he's commented, he's been there in the ground as well, doing nothing. The lazy yeah. ass man. That's his job to stand there doing nothing. <laughs> but either way, he's been there like the plays. The they, they feel louder. I, I do wonder yeah. if that's a conscious effort from maybe the coaches or whatever, everyone to get behind. But he said the amount of times he said he felt like there was a crowd there because the players, like they've got, it, you know, the ones sat in the stands, they've got more and more vocal. And that, yeah, yeah. That, that can only help as well, surely, can't it? It helps yeah. bring the squad together. And I wonder if yeah. that's going to help them even towards maybe the Champions League final, that togetherness that they've built. I think anybody who's found success this year has found it through so not just ability, but to, through togetherness because there have been so many moments where, I think any team or every team could have had a down and they could just say, well, 
that's it. We're just going to put it down to this year being a different, difficult year. This was tough, you know, we're just going to throw in the towel and so on. But like I say, you, you get to see, well, you get to hear more noises, which you normally wouldn't hear because people on the bench, they won't ever really stand up and shout or whatever because they're on the bench and it's like a bit taboo where the manager's like right in front of you. But when you're in the stands, you're watching yeah. it almost like a fan yourself, <laughs> you know, and that's your team. So you're getting, you are, you do end up getting more involved and like, you know, you'll be more involved as well because you can be heard. Like I remember yeah. seeing Fernandinho talk specifically about City on the sidelines, like during a game, it's almost like he's coaching it himself. Like he's shouting, he's ranting, he's raving, he's saying, come on, he's putting pressure on referees as if he was on the field and that stuff's great. And I think they'll miss that, obviously, when fans come back in, but they'll gain that 12th man because, you know, they've been, as I say, there've been so many moments where, and decisions with referees as well, because we shouldn't forget that. Like, let's be clear, a referee's role is to be impartial, but how can you be impartial when 50,000 people are telling you you're wrong? You know, at some yeah. point, that's going to affect. That's going to affect you in terms of a decision you make. Like even as players, you know yeah, when doing something like and a referee's not. You try. You say to him, "Ref, you've missed this. You've missed this." Like they think about it. So when everybody's shouting for it, you know that stuff's been <laughs> missed. But that, as I say, that togetherness, I think, from City and lots of other teams as well, who've managed to achieve something this year. That I think that is massive because you've not had the sort of highs away from the field and stuff that, and you know, certain things on the field which you've been able to enjoy in times gone by. But to get through it, and especially for City, they weren't front runners the whole season. No. They had to work no. to get there. And then what they did was so good that all you could do was match it. But to match it, you had to be perfect. And so as a consequence, that, that's incredible. Look, you, you're an ex-pro. You know lots of players and lots of um, probably ex-ones or maybe some active in the game at the moment. I mean, uh, maybe not, but uh, have you heard any talk about that run from ex-pros or friends or whatever in the game? And have they been like, what are they doing? It's ridiculous or anything like yeah. that? Or Yeah, I've, I've heard it from people who haven't been part of that title race. Like, I know there's a great appreciation for what City were doing, especially for the point where I think... As crazy as it is, I think some of the best football was played when, say, Kevin De Bruyne and Sergio weren't, weren't available. I think it was around turn of yeah. the year, the way they were moving the ball and so on. And people were seeing it. And it felt like they were seeing it for the first time because they've seen some teams play. But we've never seen some teams play exactly like that in the way they could control the game, the way they could keep a clean sheet, the fact that anybody in the field could score. And they were all doing that. So they didn't really appear to have a weakness. So people were looking at that and saying, wow, like they're, they're different. They're really different. And that's the it's word, isn't it? To, that's the yeah, word, different. Hard, and that's hard to, hard to play against because like, you've not experienced it before. What makes it different, in your opinion? As a, looking at it as an ex-player, as a fan, as a pundit, and all that kind of stuff, I mean, what makes this Man City side different to um, maybe the 17-18 side or the 18-19 side or even, yeah. I don't know, Arsenal's Invincibles or that famous Mourinho Chelsea side or any of the United sides? Because it does feel like a very... It's a different achievement. Uh, it's a unique yeah. achievement, of course, because it has to be given the world right now. Um, but there's no denying it's insanely good. And I, I feel like, if anything, personally, I don't think it's got enough credit, personally, for what they've done for the consistency. But what makes it that different in your personal opinion? I think um, the thing that makes it different for me, obviously, every era requires a different type of team to be successful and so on. Because we talk about the Invincibles team, and for as much as they were technically good, like they were tough. They were tough people from front to back. <laughs> they could kick Real you bastards, in the let's be honest. Out play. Yeah, exactly. And even like with the Mourinho Chelsea team, like they were the one and dones. You know, you go one nil down against Chelsea, just go home, whether it's the first <laughs> minute or... <laughs> one and no. dones, yeah. Exactly. So I think for this City team, the thing that's made them so different is the fact that like it's this, even though there's, the, there's an incredible amount of, of like, high football in IQ all over the field and it's matched up with a manager who's possibly got the highest so the stuff yeah. in which the way in which they're thinking the way they're playing isn't normal because I think most teams might have one or two people that are supremely intelligent when it comes down to the game of football and you can see the way that they move within their side that makes them elite but for all this City team even though they're not all the biggest names and so on they fully understand the manager's vision and they, there was a spell, I think, when we were together at City TV. Like, they did it for probably 95% of our whole game. Yeah. Everything that they, was do that they were doing was exactly right according to how the manager wanted to see it. So then you find a manager who has a different vision and the players that can execute and they have their own individual ability. And then you find what the City team has been this year where it's not just a case of, you know, passing for the sake of passing. Everything has a purpose. And you don't yeah, really yeah. find teams who have that because you have some who just want to go for like that tiki tack or whatever. But this isn't tiki tack a city. This is control, possession, defend well city, attack well city, and then counter attack well and stop the counter well. 
this is re- this is supremely intelligent football. And I think when you when players have gone up against it and teams have gone up against it, I think that's what they found the hardest because for as much as people have incredible ability, like Kevin De Bruyne might play a pass you've never seen before or Phil Foden might go past someone in a way you've not seen before. You know, yeah. they're still doing other stuff which complements the team to their highest level. And that's, I think that's ultimately why I think they're a bit different to teams that have, that have come and gone. No, I think you're right. I mean, uh, I, I don't think it's talked about anywhere near enough. It's the intelligence of this team. And they're just it's simply um, supremely intelligent footballers. And obviously, they're all technically brilliant as well. But it's that understanding or I guess maybe that ability to or listen and learn, I guess, and correct on their own mistakes. And yeah. that humility as well, because you have to have a little bit of humility if you're going to achieve yep. to the, the extent that they did. Um, it's um, it's testament to, the, obviously, the players, individuals and Guardiola himself. I mean, um, and I guess this, this is why they're now in the Champions League final. I mean, as I'm going to put this up, it's about two weeks tomorrow, probably two weeks and a couple of days away. Um, it's it's possibly the biggest game. It could be the biggest game in this modern club's history, maybe. I don't know, maybe the United 320 moment was that. It probably definitely was, actually. But I think it's fair to say that this is what the club, at least the club club's owners, have been building towards. They want this. They want that you know, that infamous trophy. And I guess who doesn't? Um, but it, with, it, with, with that comes its own question marks because obviously now we've got this balancing act uh, as a city of trying to find uh, who to play and what to play. Inside yeah. the dressing room now, uh, how do you think they approach this now? Because obviously it's only two weeks away. It's not that long. You know, you're tempted yeah. to rest some players, but at the same time you need to keep players sharp. It, yeah. uh, it, what, what, if you're Guardiola now, Nadim, like, what do you do? How do you, how do you even rotate the squad? How do you keep it happy? How do you keep everyone optimistic that you can even get a game as well? Um, I think some of the stuff in terms of coaching to make people happy is keeping them involved in training because I think some managers from the get-go, they'll have on a Monday, for example, if it's a Saturday, Saturday type run, on the Monday, they've already picked the team for Saturday. So you have yeah. an 11 and they're doing all the team shape and so on. And then the other team are just basically kind of fodder, like very irrelevant. So, t- so there's no time invested in those people at all. And that's when it can, you can get really, you can be really, really tough as an outsider because you become an outsider. It becomes a them and us type thing. And it's yeah. good when you're starting and you get all the information, but then you might be a player on the other side who comes on after 10 minutes and has no idea what they're supposed to be doing because nobody's invested time into you. Yeah. But in fairness to Pep, I think across the years he's been a manager, I think whenever he makes changes and stuff like that, I think the players on the field and the ones off it know exactly what's required. So if everybody feels like they're involved in training and, you know, they're trying to find relationships, say, between the left back and the left winger and stuff like that, then, you know, you do feel there's a sense of competition for places and tra- the standard in training will be very, very high. Firstly, because the coach demands it. And secondly, because the players demand it. And thirdly, because all the players want to play in a Champions League final. I yeah. think the games themselves... Uh, the last two games of the season, how many is, you know, they might matter a little bit in terms of who he's going to pick for that game. But it's the stuff in which he's seen probably day to day in terms of the tactical setups and stuff that he's going to try and do to prepare for the Champions League, which will maybe probably change his eye a bit more. Because, for example, we look at the, the game when they lost to Chelsea and the formation that they played is one which you will never see in a Champions League final from Pep. Yeah. But there were probably players who didn't lose any credit with him because of the way that they trained and the way they actually went out to try and understand what he wanted from them in that particular game. So it's more than the result. The little bits of information in performance, both on the field that day and in training and so on, and reactions and so on and so forth. So I think for him, he's going to hope that people stay fit, but he's also going to want to see who stays hungry. Because I think for anybody who downs tools now to try and protect themselves for the final, you kind of don't want them to be there. Because every game should matter for you as a professional. And if you find a place where it doesn't, then what, how does that bode say if the final comes and things aren't going your way? Because you look at, very quickly, the, champi- the semi-final against PSG. PSG were good in the first half of the first leg, survived in the second half. The second leg came, they had one or two opportunities, and then from there they imploded. You don't want to have yeah. a team of players who could implode. And I think for City, ultimately, I don't think they do because they, at the moment they appear to be a team where when things are going wrong, they all band together to try and make it right. And all that type of mentality comes from moments like this between now and the end of the season when you see how much just being like competing for a place is for everyone. Because some people can be down on themselves and so on. But ultimately, you need players who are confident, players who show an understanding of what he wants from them and the ones who know that every single training day and every game matters. And if you see good performances from them come... Wednesday, whatever is next weekend, and the last game of the season against Everton, 
who knows what difference that could make. But I'll tell you one thing, the other side of the coin is also true, where if you don't try, and if you don't take it seriously and you go in half-hearted, you'll go missing for the next two weeks and you might never get the opportunity again. It's, um, it's, a, it's a double-edged coin in a way, isn't it? Because um, it's a double-edged coin. Is that even the saying? I can't remember. It's a double-edged coin. It's a double-edged coin. It's a double-edged coin. It's a double-edged coin. There's some kind of yeah. analogy in there. Yeah. But either way, what I'm going to say is like... Um, is because you try too hard, you get injured, and I do wonder if Guardiola wants to go back of his mind. Take it easy, but don't take it easy. Impress me, you know. Yeah. Like, I, I do wonder because you, you you must think that as a manager, yeah. surely. Yeah, you would do, but that's when you put trust in the medical team that have gotten you to this point so far. Because people yeah. don't need to try too hard; they just need to try hard for whatever's being required of them. So if they're going to train for an hour this week instead of one and a half hours like last week, just train hard for that hour. Yeah. And even though you've you've worked hard, but there's a, there's less load on you because of the fact it's for a shorter period of time. And I think at this time of year now, it's not about the physical stuff. It's more about the understanding and tactical stuff and making sure you are ready and available. So that hard concept I speak of is about doing it at the right moments. You know, you go through your warm ups, right? Take the possession seriously. Take this warm up seriously. Take this seven aside seriously. Take the tactical element of this 11 aside very seriously because you don't want a manager that ultimately will be putting players out who he doesn't trust to be able to do the plan which he's created. Because, you know, as we've seen ourselves, like in a one-off game, anything can happen, especially in the Champions League final against a team that's in good form. So ultimately, yeah, the harder goes alongside smarter, but it doesn't go alongside essentially just down in tools and making sure yeah. you keep yourself healthy because ultimately, like, you'll be missing out. Yeah, um, a quick, just quickly, by the way, um, going back to the Chelsea game, I know it's kind of old news now, but that, that was, um, it was not controversial, it's not the right word, but it definitely split, torn opinions, um, uh, split opinions on that game because you, you rotated an awful lot, you know, um, and some people wanted to see City win the league that day. What do you personally think the motivation was behind that team? And it was a slightly, no, I wasn't say crazy is the right word, but it was an interesting it team. Off, you know, yeah, it, it wasn't was, far yeah. off that, but uh, do you think that was in... Do you think there's any deeper meaning to that? Was he? I mean, because Thomas Tuchel knows how we're going to play, but still he hasn't played against those. Or was it just a case of resting legs, in your personal opinion? Or I think I think he I think there was a case of resting legs. I think he does. He's, he talks about that a lot in terms of the amount of load yeah. that people have had to sort of be under throughout this year. So he does try and protect people wherever possible. But <laughs> here's the ironic thing: is if he doesn't play with a false nine and he has his favourite like wingers and so on and so forth, it means the people who are to come in are Gabriel Jesus, Sergio Aguero, Raheem Sterling, Ferran Torres. That's four of them. Like, yeah. they would be the ones, they would be the next ones in. So if you want to play them, you kind of got to play them all unless one of them is going to be on the bench. But how does that look if you're, not on the, if you're on the bench for the first, for the main game and then you're on the bench for the game two days after? Like, where, yeah. does that, where would that leave you as a player? So I think he's trying to fit as many people as possible into that team. And I think if you want, if you could have fully rotated 11 men or whatever. I'm sure you would have really tried to do that. But yeah. circumstance meant it was whatever. But um, I think I wasn't too... Well, firstly, when the team came out, I was doing City TV stuff and I looked at the team. I looked at the names. I had no idea what formation they were playing. Like, not a clue. <laughs> but I thought, Rodri is on an island. That's what I thought. So to be around Chelsea's midfield like that. But, you know, there was a purpose behind it. They tried to do whatever they tried to do in the game. It wasn't... It was a long way from being their best ever performance, but the fact is you leave the field, everybody's healthy. You've just lost out in the last minute, so you're disappointed. But, you know, you don't necessarily lose momentum by losing that game because you're still very confident in your own abilities. And also for, um, as you mentioned before, is I, one of the reasons, like, I'm a nervous City fan, but things that make me feel better about the... Uh, you are our age, of course you are, man. You're my age, exactly. you, like, so you have to be. But yeah, on. exactly. But things that make me feel more comfortable heading into a Champions League final, like, obviously, red cards and whatever can happen, but I don't see Pep losing three times to a team in a season. <laughs> you said also, it, you said it. I know, I know. But I don't, that's what I mean, that's what's making me feel, like, not confident, like, they're definitely going to win it. But these are things where if City won it, I'd be like, well, yeah, because, you know, I don't yeah, see I get, City. Yeah. And then um, as well, the best version of City hasn't been seen by Chelsea yet this season. Yeah. And for as much as, say, Chelsea made some changes for their game on Sunday, they didn't change their style. So that was their style. So if we were to look at the game for what it was, if the, if the video of the game was given to City and to Chelsea, I think City learned more about Chelsea's style of play as opposed to Chelsea not really learning a lot from City's because that's not how City play. Even if the personnel ended up being the same for like the Champions League final to that game, they wouldn't play in that manner. So what do you learn apart from the little things of individuals who, necessarily, who 
you know, they might play in the final, but it's not as in-depth as, say, all the footage that City probably have of Chelsea, where, which is overall one of the reasons why they're doing so well, because they're so consistent. But yeah. Chelsea haven't seen that from City, whether it was the semi-final of the, of the FA Cup or uh, that game on Sunday. And that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, everyone knows how Man City play. Thomas Dekel's not an idiot. He'll have the analysts. They'll know exactly what City are going to do. But seeing it and feeling it and experiencing it are two different things, aren't they? Because like City know exactly how Pulisic or Mao um, will move around people like Rodri or Fernandinho. Uh, but they don't know. Um, they haven't got a chance to correct any potital weaknesses or address any situations. So they're not going in blind as such. But they're definitely... It's, it's, it's going to be more of an experience for those Chelsea players than it will be for the City ones. And, and yeah. maybe there's something slightly empowering as well. Like there's, there's no fear fact as well for that first 11 because I don't know how you feel about this I'm not sure if you've been in a team before where um, you've been rotated out and people go oh it'll affect the confidence but the way I see it is most of City's first 11 I'm using that inverted commas because obviously I know it's, it's kind of fluid but they haven't played or lost against Chelsea this season would that even yeah. affect their personal confidence going into the game because did they go yeah. well if I was involved we probably would have won I mean is an element of that yeah, 100% I think even when we saw Phil Ford and Ilkay Gundogan coming on the field on the weekend it felt like, oh, here we go. The starters are here it, now. It, here comes the boys you know, kind of thing. Like, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So they, they ended up losing the game, but they still have that sense. You can see in the way they were playing that they had that feel about themselves as well. Yeah, so, yeah. Obviously, you know, losing to Chelsea is like, it's a significant thing, but then you look at the context of the game as well. And for Chelsea, for City, could have won the league that, year, that day. Could have. For Chelsea, they had to win the game that day yeah. because they were trying to finish in the top four. So the, the motivations for as much as, you know, the winning the league thing is a noble one. The one about you have to win to finish in the top four is a more serious one. So like I say, it it was different. Align both sets of motivations and maybe it's a completely different game. But um, yeah, I think the players who will come in for City, if they do come in, that is. I think what Pep will do well in that game is he'll put the people in who are the most confident, the most informed and the, and the ones who understand what's required from that game the most. So we can try and guess at what the 11 will be now. But in the space of two weeks, that could change. But yeah. we just know that there's not going to be anybody on the field to kick off that game who doesn't have the most confidence that they can go out and win against Chelsea and get yeah. themselves the Champions League winner's medal. And I think that's pretty empowering, really, in a way, because um, the, the, there's, there's no confidence not there for any of those players. And, and I can't really believe I'm sat here as a City fan even chatting about this. One with you, so cheers. <laughs> Thank okay. you for that. And it's, yeah, it's mad. Like, we're Premier League, you know, Premier League winners are sat here uh, chatting about a City in the Champions League final. Um, uh, football, I guess one thing it does show is how quickly, how quickly things change in football. Because look where City are right now. I mean, I know it's been a slight while since we're here but it still feels very fresh for me as an individual like um that this city are where they are and it's good uh Naden, man thank you so much for coming on uh, i won't keep you any longer but it's been cool. wonderful as always mate um uh, are you, uh finally are you, you're confident about the final aren't you you're confident no i'm not confident at all no i'm just like you <laughs> I'm, hope, I'm hopeful about the final and if they do win like the the thing i want the most because I, I, I work from the negative and try and develop positive so the negative would be like chelsea have done this before if they win it the fallout happens in your home, like, because yes, it's not a foreign team. Like, all the noise, for as much as City will be devastated, got, they have have to be, City will have to be covered in England, but so will Chelsea. You'll be seeing a Chelsea team bus going around on Sky Sports News and stuff like that. And I'll be honest, I'm not here for that, if should the worst happen. But the other side of the equation is, like, City have been the most consistent team in England this year, and they have a manager who is very, very good in finals. So this is with a that. successful season, isn't it, already? I mean, yeah. already this is successful, isn't it, regardless? But then you don't want to sound like that sort of softly, softly, like, oh, I'm just <laughs> yeah. trying to protect myself. Because this is what I heard from Liverpool, team, Liverpool uh, supporters last year. They had like a thousand point lead and said, yeah, but you know, City could go on a run. I'm like, relax, it's done. So you don't want to, you don't want to appear overconfident, but then you don't want to downplay it too much. And I think the middle ground is understanding that going into the game, City are favourites and knowing why they are favourites but also appreciating the fact that it's not a done deal unless they do the job. But if they perform to their best, they'll do the job. Um, and uh, they're more than capable, aren't they, mate? They're more than capable. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching this. If you haven't already, go and check out Kickback with Nadem. It's just a fantastic, essential listen. Um, uh, mo the most insightful football podcast that I personally listen to anyway. Go check it out. There'll be a link in the description. I can't believe I'm plugging it. You know Nadem, it's fine. You don't even have to say that every <laughs> way. Yeah. Guys, uh, yeah. City, I will be back uh, tomorrow for the Newcastle game, of course. Go watch the match preview as well. No, by now, like, comment, subscribe, all that usual stuff. Nadem's pretty good at that from last time as well, from what I remember. Uh, um, it's, it's just, yeah, just down there hit subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss out sure you <laughs> ring the bell yeah ring the Apparently bell so you don't miss out
and, and well, please talk in the comments. Give me a shout out and go and follow the, pod, follow the podcast. How about that? Yeah, Iman said it. There you go. In a bit, guys. <laughs>